Come this way. Enola Holmes 2 promises more romance, more action, and more danger than the original. Of course, that means bigger explosions, awkward dancing, and a bunny in a baby stroller? Number 1. The itsy bitsy Millie Bobby Brown went up the water spout. Millie was strapped in with a wire for this scene. It's one thing to just do a stunt, it's another thing to also be in a dress doing the stunt. There's always a sense of nervousness going up. Number 2. Fist fights and curly whirly bars make for the ultimate romance. These two couldn't remember their lines if they hit them in the face. Shut up! You're, you're, you're confusing me. I prefer hitting him. But they make me kiss him. Millie got her revenge if he's not a fan of chocolate or toffee. She just had a curly whirly. They're delicious. Go to your local British candy store and get one for yourself. That's the tip. You should probably write that down. Number 3. This is a scene we didn't know we needed in our lives. It was chilly out the day they filmed the breakout scene in Portsmouth, and the fire just wasn't lasting long enough to keep any of the 30 extras warm. By fire, we mean explosion. Action! Fire! Ready to go again? Some say I'm a handmaid's tale. I don't see it. Number 4. Millie makes friends wherever she goes. Or enemies. We can't tell sometimes. She's such a troll. Look at the way she smiles at the camera. No, we're not talking about Enola smiling at the camera this time. Millie, that's some great casting right there. I'm gonna have to go and get Timothy Chalamet to do the scene. Millie is so in the habit of looking at the camera for Enola Holmes, she's worried she'll ruin takes on Stranger Things. Number 5. Our money's on Millie. He's fitting. Yes. Even when these two are fighting, it's all giggles on set. Why did you learn how to fight? How did you learn how to fight? <laughs> Number 6. Millie had to learn how to learn how to dance. That makes sense, we think. Tewksbury had to teach Enola, so Millie can't get that good. He's just looking at plants being an idiot. That's the reason that we put him over there. <laughs> Both actors had to do a ton of dance lessons. And I think they all went out the window by the time we went in there. Audio is a pain. You can't just talk and listen to the music at the same time, so the actors were listening to the music on little earbuds. Harry was like, keep the distance! And then the women producers on set were like, get closer! Number 7. There's too much nonsense going on on this set. We've all been there. Which way we go? Is this the camera way. in the way? <laughs> <laughs> He's a mess. Maybe if you took that bucket hat off, you'd be able to see better. Y'all see that bunny in the stroller, right? That wasn't part of the movie, was it? Number 8. You're gonna wanna play this one back. With such blurry video quality, this looks pretty impressive at one and a quarter speed. Go ahead, you know you want to. YouTube won't stop you. Number 9. This movie was made to look effortless. And that takes a whole lot of effort. Millie Bobby Brown helped conceptualize the costumes for the movie. While she's also a producer of the film, you know she had a huge influence over the story, the production, and yes, even her costumes. For the ball gown scene, she said, I always knew I wanted it to be a mint green dress. Pistachio is Enola's favorite color. The dress was tight. When I say my lines, I always used to hold my breath and then say them like with a lot of angst. <laughs> There's no real corset under this dress. Millie was done with them, and when it came to the Matchstick Girls, she wanted them to look vibrant, saying, with the misery that they were in and the working environments they were in, there was still fire in them. The color palettes felt a bit more exciting because the working environments do not reflect who they were. Number 10. Wherever Millie goes, she starts dance parties. It's common to see her dancing on the set of Stranger Things, too. It's nice to see she gets along with the woman whose character threatened her with a retractable knife. Sometimes you just don't know. Number 11. Costumes, lighting, staging, cameras, special effects, it takes a village. The first big night scene when Enola goes to follow May down the street, you will see um, a, a, a gas lamp in the foreground and beyond a, a street full of mist and traffic and people in different costumes. And one costume, May's, stands out and she's lit perfectly 
Movies are a mishmash of different art forms, so it truly takes an army of artists to make them work. Everything was worked out and it was designed like a painting. It makes the art sing when the other departments are in sync. Great collaboration. You know, the, the theme of collaboration is in the practice and the execution as well as the story of the film. Number 12. We miss you, Sam. But also, Enola Holmes 2 was great anyways. Mmm. That's the sound of us sticking our tongue out at you. It wasn't intentional to exclude Sam Claflin from the sequel. Unfortunately, scheduling conflict stopped him from coming back. But the director said they were eager to work with him again, so who knows what the future holds. Number 13. We love the underlying symbol of the matches. It only takes one to start a fire so huge it can't be put out. The matchstick factory in the movie uses the interior of an old printing factory in Wapping. It's not very far from the Bryant and May factory, the cause of the real Match Girls strike in 1888. The production designer, Michael Carlin, said, We also used videos from an Indian match factory where parts of the process are still done by hand to understand how the process actually worked. He also said that it was important that all the matchstick girls knew what they were doing to the point where it came naturally to them. It's quite a process. In the 19th century, the matchsticks had to be manually dipped in four different chemicals. Four chemicals, one of which was poisonous. Not for the actors, of course. Director Harry Bradbeer said, I kind of dusted off my memory of the Match Girls factory strike. I thought, well, here's a story of sisterhood. Here's a story of going from a story that was about constitutional change to social and union change to industrial action. Number 14. We were wondering what looked so strange. Head of hair and makeup with the most amazing name, Peter Swords King, says we had to keep it very simple. Her hair wouldn't be down. That's much more associated with someone much younger. So to have her hair down is going against the rules of the day. But that's very much her character. It's important to do that with her rather than just fit what everyone else does. She comes from a slightly eccentric background with her mother. When it comes to chase scenes, Peter Swords King said we wouldn't get that movement that sort of intensity of her emotions. So in that sense, her hair being down, although not correct for the period, is actually very useful for us. This is in contrast to the ball scene. Everyone's hair is perfectly period accurate and lovely. But Enola will have nothing to do with that because it's unimportant to her. It's important to put a pin in it and keep it out of the way maybe, but that's it. Get a haircut. It's a mess. Number 15. Recreating what's already been perfected is an impossible task. It was a challenge to create Sherlock's apartment because it's been done so many times and done very well. So this team wanted to emphasize his love for natural philosophy and music and focused a bit on making him an obsessive collector. Maybe I can help. You can help by leaving. Isn't Enola Holmes 2 just as charming behind the scenes as it was on TV? Are you looking forward to the third installment? What historically significant moment do you think they will latch onto next time? Let us know in the comments. And thanks for hanging out with us here at The Things.